Good morning and welcome to this, the 21st Sunday after Pentecost. We are doing a sermon series here on Sunday morning as well on the video um, using the three solas, the solas scriptura, solas faith, and sola gratias. So we're doing both of them as we are doing all three of them in the week. Today we are focusing on um, faith and talking about faith today. Uh, just some words of announcements. Um, thank you to all the people who work so hard to put the Oktoberfest together. I'm recording this before the Oktoberfest or the October Festival, and I'm uh, I'm just hope that everything works out all right. Um, and it's a beautiful event because I certainly at this point are looking forward to it. So I hope that you all, I hope it went well, and I hope that everything, um, uh, that was an event, a nice event. Um, so I hope that that's good. Today, uh, we will worship together here in the sanctuary at uh, 8.30 and 11 o'clock. And in the middle of that time, we will have Sunday school for the kids, but also during the Sunday school session, we will have an adult forum on the ELCA's youth gathering. And the ELCA youth gathering will be on um, July 24th to 28th, I believe in 2022 next year. And we really need to talk about that because it's such an important um, and uh, influential experiences, experience for our young children. So. Um, we're going to talk about that at the adult forum. So if you, you know, even watching this and you can come by, come on by. Um, if you're in church, uh, certainly come on by to talk about that. Our prayer concerns for today are Reed, Michael Bollinger, Nancy Fox, Carl Gerber, uh, Lauren Lineman, Rick Sheets, Grace Schultz, Rick Tinney, Laura Wilkie, and Donna Wilt. Let us begin. Good morning, boys and girls. I brought this little, like, it's kind of like a little guitar. Here, I'll put it here. Um, and it makes sounds. And um, I got it when I went to Hawaii because um, I liked it. And so I'm going to play with it while we're here. But we're going to play a game. I'm going to play two notes. And you tell me whether they're the same or different. OK? So we'll do this three times. Ready? Here we go. That sounded terrible, we'll try again. That still sounded terrible, try again. Were they the same or were they different? Okay, that's one. Number two. I'll do it again. And number three. Okay, were they the same or were they different? Number one was the, number two was, and number three was, I won't even give you the answer. Prove it. Prove to me that they were different or the same. How can you? Did you see it? Did you, could, how could you, you heard it, didn't you? But you can't see it. How did you know? You, you heard it, but somebody else might have heard something different. So today we're talking about faith. And a lot of faith is in stuff you can't see. But there are things we can't see that we know are there. Like music, like that's like music, but sound is there, but we don't see it. Love is there, and we don't see it. You know, we can feel it, we can be a part of it, but we don't see it, it's not there, air. Wind, don't see it. We can see the trees move, but we, we say it's the wind, but we can't see it. So today we're talking about faith and how important it is to believe and to understand that there are things that we can't see that we know are there and that it's important for us to think about that. And it's really important for us when we talk about Jesus to understand that Jesus gives us a promise of new life. And that life is important for us, even though we can't see it. So today, think about that. There are things that we can't see that we know are there, or we believe in. And that is what faith is in Jesus is all about. 
And so that's an important thing. It's an important thing for you to have now as young children. It's a very important thing for us as adults to have that as well. So let us pray together. Dear Jesus, we thank you so much for all that you give to us, especially the gift of faith, when we know and understand your promise to us of life, and even though we can't see it, and help us always to count on that, to live in that, and be a part of that. This we ask in your name. Amen. Thank you. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Sovereign and just God, you could condemn us for our sinfulness. You could demand sacrifices and homage as conditions of your love. But through your Son, you tell us what you want, to believe in you and take care of each other. Fashion our hearts to believe in you and live as you would have us live, in loving each other. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. A reading from Romans 1, 16, 17. The power of the gospel. For I am not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God for salvation to everyone who has faith, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed through faith for faith. As it is written, the one who is righteous will live by faith. Psalm 119. Make me understand the way of your precepts, and I will meditate on your wondrous works. My soul melts away for sorrow. Strengthen me according to your word. Put false ways far from me, and graciously teach me your law. I have chosen the way of faithfulness. I set your ordinances before me. I cling to your decrees, O Lord. Let me not be put to shame. I run the way of your commandments, for you enlarge my understanding. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I will observe it to the end. Give me understanding that I may keep your law and observe it with my whole heart. Lead me in the path of your commandments, for I delight in them. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? And he said to them, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. And then a second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And he said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. And then he said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter felt hurt because he said, said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray together. Dear Lord Jesus, in this day and age when so many things are thrown in front of us to believe in or to see or to try to understand, help us to look for you, to desire you, to want you in our lives and to want your promise as a guiding post for our lives. This we ask in your name. Amen. Today we're talking about faith, soul of faith. Faith is one of those, gosh, well-used religious words, isn't it? We talk about faith a lot, especially as Lutherans. But the words has various degrees of meaning. The Bible uses it in different ways all the time, too. Just to start, now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen, says the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 1. That's pretty self-explanatory. Your faith has made you well. Jesus says a couple of times, implying that the person's trust in Jesus was a kind of prerequisite for the miracle that happened. And we hear today in the book of Romans that one who is righteous will live by faith. It's not works that are important, for we, can, we can't earn our way into heaven, but faith, because if we trust in God, he will save us from our sins and bring us to eternal life. 
And there are so many ways to, ex to explain or understand what is meant by having faith in Jesus Christ. To understand St. Paul's perspective, here is like a little condensed version of his godly history. God created, God saw his people did bad things, God banished them and flooded them. And by the time the people, his people were slaves in Egypt, God freed them and gave them the law so that they would know what is right and what is wrong. Well, that made people law followers and not God lovers. By Jesus' time, God realized that his people could not be loyal no matter what. So he sent his son so that people could be redeemed for their sins. And God said, son, Jesus does the saving action on the cross and everyone is saved regardless of sins as long as they have the will to be followers of Jesus. That is, to have faith. And we would say as Lutherans and Christians, we are justified by our faith. We are made good in heaven, not by our works, but by their faith but by our faith in the actions and promises of Jesus. Now, have you ever asked what that faith means? It means we can't work our way into heaven even if we wanted to. But if we desire heaven, if we trust in God and his promises to Jesus Christ, if we want to be good and pure in, heart, in our heart, that is our faith, then God will welcome us into his eternal kingdom. Faith is an example, in this example, is to trust God in his promises in Jesus Christ. There's an old wartime saying, there are no atheists in foxholes. When the chips are down and when we are desperate, we will pray no matter who we are. And I think that's true for the most part. That foxhole prayer, even in desperation, is still trusting in Jesus is having a desire for Jesus' promise of new life. And maybe it is, maybe it is, at that time, the assurance that faith is needed most of all. Faith has two important parts. One, it acknowledges that we desire to be with God and do, with God, do what God wants. We believe in his way. And two, it acknowledges that there, we're unable to do it on our own that we are sinners in need of God's forgiveness through Christ Jesus. That is what it's meant by having faith. It's really not something that we can have in various degrees. We can't half believe that we desire to be with God and do his will. We can't have half of the belief that we can't do it on our own. Faith, when we think of it this way, is like an on and off switch. You have it or you don't. There is no small, medium, or large faith. The first reading today are the words that started the whole Reformation. Um, verse 1 in Romans 17, or, ver or chapter 1 in uh, 17 in Romans, for it is in the righteousness of God is revealed through faith for faith. As it is written, the one who is righteous will live by faith. The part through faith for faith sounds great, doesn't it? What does that mean exactly? Well, Luther translated it, and that, op that opened the whole idea, new idea of understanding God in Christ Jesus, certainly through faith. And he said it meant for the righteousness, righteousness of God is revealed through his, that is Jesus's faithfulness for our faith. As it is written, the one who is righteous will live by his faithfulness, that is, Jesus' faithfulness. Luther trans, Luther's translation informs us that Jesus' action of faithfulness opens the door for our faith, and that we who live in Jesus' faithfulness have the faith in it, are righteous before God. Another thing I think that we can talk about today, and that is, We've been taught over the years, I don't know about you, but I have, that doubt is the enemy of faith and that doubt is not good for us. Bible scholars and theologians today are talking about doubt being a part of the process of faith, and that having faith is not easy and there are struggles and as struggles in our lives and as things happen, 
We face loss, and that can lead to doubt. And we need to work through that doubt. And when we do, we wind up with a stronger understanding of what our faith can be. We may have a struggle understanding the promise of Jesus is offering to us in his new life in him. We may realize that Paul says numerous times, we don't have anything else but him to rely on. And therefore, we make a deliberate decision to affirm our faith once again. That's the faith process. As we look at our faith today, we are called not just to believe, but to have that desire of God to do his will, to trust in God's plan and to do what he wants. As Jesus says in our gospel, Peter, do you love me? And Peter says, yes, Lord, you know I love you. Then Jesus says, don't stop there, feed my sheep. Faith calls us into action, Jesus' action. If we love to have faith in Jesus' promise, it is because we want to be followers of Jesus and do what Jesus would do, his will. If we want to do his will, then we will be, as Luther calls us, little Jesuses. So today, as we look at sola fede, faith alone, we conclude it's not about just having a belief in Jesus. It's about something that comes in, it's, it is not something that comes in small, medium, and large. Faith means we are committed to Jesus Christ and his mission. And while it is not important to stack up merits and works to validate our faith, we should with faith in Jesus respond in love to others with the love and grace he has shown to us. But it also means we are understand that we will fall short, we will be complacent, We will sin, not because we don't know what is right, but because we know what is right and can't do it perfectly. We believe that in our hearts, that if we believe that if our hearts are in, if we try, God will forgive us. I think that is what faith alone means. It is our faith that leads us and not our works. It is our faith, our desires, to be card-carrying members of the kingdom of God, and maybe at the same time, one that has missed a couple of assignments along the way. That's us, people with grandiose desire to be followers, but at the same time in need of the forgiveness for the times that we don't act like it. It is that faith, those grandiose desires that are the ticket to the promises of Jesus Christ. That is the faith alone that God is looking for. Amen. Set free from sin and death, and nourished by the word of truth, we join in prayer for all of God's creation. Loving God, form us as your people in your image of goodness by helping us to embrace your spirit-filled word as we engage scriptures. Bless us in our search for you and in the process of always wanting to learn, connect, and understand your love and grace. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy One, For the gift of the church handed down through the ages, and for all who carry on the servant ministry of Jesus, 
We praise you. Send your Holy Spirit upon all who are discerning calls to ministry in its many forms and equip them with your gifts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Suffering One, for all who work toward peace and who lead nations with a servant's heart, we praise you. Bring justice for all who suffer violence, persecution, discrimination, hunger, poverty, and homelessness, and create places of refuge for all people. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Merciful One, for all who do the work of healing in mind, body, and spirit, we praise you. Surround and comfort all who struggle with depression, anxiety, cancer, diabetes, dementia, or any illness. We pray for Reed Michael Bollinger, Rick Sheets, Grace Anna Lee Faith Elko, Rick Tinney, Nancy Fox, Lori Willicke, Carl Gerber, Diana Wilt, the family of Shirley Craiger at Shirley's Passing, that all may be comforted and healed. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Sustaining one, for all who volunteer for the vitality of this congregation, we praise you. Strengthen and encourage greeters, ushers, office volunteers, bakers, counters, committee, and group leaders, teachers, students, evangelists, singers, builders, nurturers, and all who serve with generous hearts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Confident that you hear us, O God, we boldly place our prayers in your hands. Through Jesus Christ, our truth and life. Amen. And let us pray together as our Lord and Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he cast his eyes upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We care as friends. We love as family. We serve as Christ. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.